So I'd like to talk about a second order type circuit using again linear components. And in this case, I'd like to be able to use a single op amp and kind of show what you can do with this with just resistors, capacitors, and say a single op amp. Actually, in this case, it's an interesting circuit because the single op amp is just being used as a buffer. So it's a gain of one. So you could actually imagine any circuit that would give you roughly a gain of one could pretty much be replaced for any of these structures. And so that turns out to be a fairly, fairly nice and straightforward way to approach this. And then you end up having just two resistors and two capacitors to look at a whole range of second order behavior. In fact, in some ways it kind of is an interesting thing, right? Because for a normal second order structure, you would expect to have, you would expect that you would have two, you know, you'd have a, a gain, a center frequency, and a Q. And I've got three parameters, so you'd think that I have the ability to potentially set hopefully two of those, if not three of those, in a fairly reasonable way. So let's take a look at how this works. Well, the first thing is that we know V2 is roughly going to be equal to V out, because after all, it's a buffer. But whatever happens at V out doesn't directly affect V2. So this node is somewhat isolated, or is effectively isolated because of this ideal amplifier. Okay. Now you get into the structure a little bit for, more further, and what you realize is, okay, let me write KCL at V1 and KCL at V2. There really isn't a whole lot of other ways to solve this one. It's pretty much a straightforward structure there. KCL at V1 gives you a, um, or V2 gives you sort of one core structure, which is just an RC circuit. You get sort of your typical RC response out of this, so nothing is surprising there. KCL at V1 gives you three different terms, you kind of pull them together. Now, realizing they have the same R allows you to, to sort of multiply both all sides by R, which then gives you SC1 and R, which then sort of says, hey, that's probably one of the time constants, and I'm going to use R times C2 as a second time constant. So now I've got kind of two time constants to play with. Well, that actually gives me fairly um, reasonable structures to work with in terms of these two equations. Now I just need to simply linearly combine them and I get a pretty reasonable transfer function at the end, which is 1 over a combination of two tau's, which is not an uncommon thing to see. 2 times 2 tau 2 plus 1. Now the gain of this turns out to be 1 and that's pretty much how the circuit would work. Now by changing some of the, changing these two r's to be different, that might change change the gain, but Let's start, go with the fact we have a gain of 1, and that works. But I still can actually look at the tau and the q for the circuit. And actually, the expressions turn out to be fairly straightforward. The tau turns out to be proportional to r and the sort of geometric mean of c1 and c2. And interestingly enough, then q turns out to be 1 half of c1 over c2. So that actually allows you to kind of look at those two things and play off of them to get various um, transfer functions. Now sometimes you'll see things where you actually can do this with R's rather than C's, but it's one of a whole range of different circuits where you get like two different time constants but everything else being similar and so the, the interaction of the time constants sort of modify what's happening here. And so for the parameters given up here, you actually can get your tau 1 and tau 2. The geometric mean of the, that one turns out to give you one microsecond, which is exactly what you expect here. And the values that you're given give you a Q equal to 1. In fact, you can actually look at this for a whole range of different values. You know, not just the values we gave, but imagine if C1 uh, was twice as big and C2 was half that size. Well, I'd still have the same time constant, but my Q would now be 2. Now, it doesn't move very fast but it's certain, you know, on, on that ratio, but it certainly would change and certainly improve things. Increasing R linearly increases tau, but keeps the Q the same. And then, of course, taking C1 and C2 and both scaling them up by a factor of 2 changes the tau as well. So it gives you a sense of the different um, trade-offs and possibilities with these circuits. And there's a whole range of things that you could imagine doing with this kind of structure. This, this particular form is called a Salon key, second order circuit, and very common circuit used in a whole range of different applications.